Welcome in, everyone, to another episode of the Thy and Smite podcast. Vitality here. Uh, I'm joined, as always, with Nick, if you want to say hello. What's going on, guys? Long time no see. It has been a long time. Quickly want to say that, of course, this video is going to be centered around the trade that the Chicago Bears did yesterday with the LA Chargers. They went ahead and acquired the number one wide receiver, what I would consider to be the best wide receiver in uh, Chargers overall history, in um, Keenan Allen. Um, the cost, of course, was a fourth-round pick. This is not a news-breaking channel as much as it's more of a discussion. But mm -hmm. the fact that it's a fourth-round pick could indicate one of two things. Um, well, probably could be two things. Definitely the Chargers needed to clear cap. You heard the news already with everyone, uh, Mike Williams, rather, being cut. And both Khalil Mack and Bosa. Is it Joey Bosa? That Bosa, yes. they both actually restructured their contracts, which is cool. So everyone thought, okay, that's great. They're going to be able to get under the cap and you know continue on with their own free agency with uh, Keenan Allen a part of their football team. Well, right. I guess they approached Keenan Allen, asked him to take a pay cut. He told them to you know jump off a bridge, and now here we are. That facilitated the trade, um, and the Bears' fourth-round pick was good enough to get the deal done. Ironically yeah. enough, the Patriots were reported to have been offered or approached the Chargers for mm -hmm. the trade, and they did ask. For, uh, it was the Chargers, I believe, either asked for the fourth round pick or inquired about it, and the Patriots said that that fourth round pick was too rich. Yes. So six spots later, the Bears' fourth round pick, it's 110 overall. That mm -hmm. was good enough to get the deal done. So, Nick, let me ask you, what are your thoughts on the trade? How are you feeling about it? I mean, immediate thoughts is – you add a bona fide wide receiver one who now can sit in a wide receiver two position sitting in the slot where he mainly plays. You're getting a guy that, yes, he's on the older end and he does come with a pretty heavy cap, hit, but we're in a year where the cap isn't that big of a deal. And obviously I know I've been um, doing a little research cap and versus cash is a little bit different too as well. So the cap can say one thing, but it's a difference on whether or not the team wants to actually pay that with cash. Um, but regardless of the cat members, because he's coming in at 23 million, he refused to take a pay cut from the Chargers. Uh, he has a 5 million roster bonus that's uh, due this Sunday, I believe. Taking all that into effect, like I said, he is an older receiver. He turns 32, I believe, in April or May. Um, so he's up there in age. But the thing with Keenan Allen is speed isn't a part of his game. So even if he does lack speed at this stage in his game, he's still a polished route runner. He creates space with the way he runs his routes. He's very twitchy, very agile. He moves better than, I would say, a lot of the wide receivers in the league. I mean, last year was one of his best career years. He missed even three games or four games last year. Still put up 108 catches for 1,200 yards. He's the definition right alongside of Mike Evans of consistency, 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 consistency. Almost 100 catches every single year. Had one year when he had 62 years ago. He missed, I think, seven or eight games due to injury. He is a little injury prone, obviously, because of these past years. But before that, he's at 1,000 yards almost every single year. He is a high-volume, low-yard per catch kind of guy. I think this is somebody that not only shows that you're going to go the route with the number one pick as being a QB, but it shows that you're willing to build around him. And obviously, that's huge right now. That's what they need to do. So you add another, like I said, bona fide wide receiver one next to DJ Moore. Does nothing but help him out and obviously the people below him as well. I think yeah, it was it would, a great trade. I think it, would it was be, a great trade. It would be so strange that the Bears didn't end up taking a quarterback at one now after kind of pushing all their chips into the table, so to speak. It would yeah. be so easy to just hold on to that fourth round pick, say that right. you could build some value when you only had five picks to begin with. Now the Bears are down to mm -hmm. four. Yep. So it'll be a good transition into the next point here, which is how does that impact the Bears' second overall pick or their own uh, first round pick, rather, for right. or at pick number nine? Um, a lot of people were saying that if one of Odunzi or Neighbors were going to be available at 9, that the Bears would absolutely take them. I'd like to just point out that the Seahawks offensive coordinator, who is now the Bears offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron, he had this archetype where he wanted three wide receivers. Mm -hmm. um, you just got went ahead and got your DK Metcalf. You've had your Tyler Lockett with um, DJ Moore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So was JSN the biggest part of the offense, the most prolific player of all time last yeah. year? No, but there's one of two things. You could add that third piece, which is still very important. You don't have a very good third wide receiver, in my opinion, right now, uh, as to be seen from Tyler Scott. Yeah. But uh, I think that if you were to go 
any of Neighbors or Odunzi at 9. That's awesome. And Nick, I'll ask your thoughts here in a second. But I just want to say, I don't think that the ninth overall pick can be spent on the ninth best player in this draft. And what I mean by that is that the Vikings have traded some assets to get another first-round pick, and all signs indicate that they are going to try and get a quarterback. Right. So is the fourth quarterback that's going to be drafted in the top eight, is that going to be a top eight player? No. A lot of people before anything had J.J. McCarthy as a second, third-round pick for whatever reason. He's a great player. But that means that you're going to have a potential to have a very favorable board, and if it's Neighbors or Odunzi – they're a top eight player. Go ahead and grab them because you're yeah. punching a little bit above your weight. Right. But you, you can't waste that pick on a fair pick being a Dallas Turner or whatever other edge is there. Right. You At that point, you right. have to trade that ninth overall pick for more assets because you really don't have many. Yeah. So, Nick, sorry for the ramble again. Your thoughts? No, no, of course. No, I want to hear what you have to say. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you go on, out and get your wide receiver. The only thing you're missing from this free agency is an obvious edge to – on the opposite side of Montez Sweat, unfortunately, Demarcus Walker isn't going to cut it. He didn't cut it last year, unfortunately. And now we lost in Yannick Ngakwe last year to an ankle, uh, breaking his ankle. So he may be back. He hasn't signed anywhere yet, obviously. I mean, he didn't sign anywhere until, like, literally the last month before the season started. So Yeah, Ngakwe is a name to keep an eye on, just saying. Yeah, didn't want to cut definitely, you off. Definitely. No, no. Um, no, of course. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's obvious now that pick nine is an obvious trade-down candidate now. Uh, the Bears are an obvious trade-down candidate with being at number nine. Um, and, I, I mean, I fully agree with you. You have uh, a Dunze or neighbors there sitting there staring at you in the face at pick number nine. You take them without even thinking about it in a heartbeat. Obviously, In a vacuum, that top six picks could go quarterback, 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 and then wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. It so if you're saying could. that the Bears could get the fifth or – you know, I would say, let's say it's the fifth best player in this draft. If you can get that player at ninth, you have That's to a, do that. You have to. Yeah, you have to. Um, and I mean, you know, this is me as a civilian, uh, you know, talking about this. Obviously, I don't know what GMs are thinking, but the way I'm thinking about it is it goes, yes, like you said, quarterback, 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 top four, go. Well, right, it, uh, was, it, was, it was three quarterbacks in a row, shoe in no matter what, just from what we're hearing and seeing. But with yeah, the Vikings so, now, sorry, I, it I could be. Smoke. It could no. It could be four quarterbacks in a row. It's very possible. It could be, but I doubt. Wild. I doubt the Cardinals trade out of having a chance to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. after they just let go of Marquise Brown. Well, I, like, I, yeah, I really yeah. The only thing would be, what if they think that all? To, in my opinion, th this is uh, a thought that they could have. What if they think that Joe Alt is as good as Marvin Harrison is as a wide receiver, and they, they say they that they want to go back down to just six. I, mean, I don't know how that happens or who's that where. It's but. possible, but why? Why go out and draft? Why go out and get Jonah Williams for a ten a ten million a year? They just released DJ Humphreys two or three days ago. Immediately, like maybe fifteen minutes after that, they signed. Um, Joan, what is his name? Jonah Williams. I said you're, you're you know, going to have to refresh me. Who is Jonah Williams? Is he an offensive he was, lineman? He was a right tackle on the bang. I'm sorry, a left tackle on the bang the Bengals after Orlando Brown. Wait, no, Orlando Brown went to. Where do, you, where do you go? The Chiefs? I, I hate the to Bengals. say any anyone on the oh, Bengals Bengals. offensive I'm line sorry. is not going to prevent you from taking Joe Alt. Right. No, I mean, I could see that, but you as a GM don't want to look that dumb that you just shoveled out $10 million to a guy, and you're not, you're, you're not going to draft Joe Alt for him to sit on the bench. You just drafted Paris Johnson Ugh. last year. You're Joe, not, you're Joe not. Alt is so good that if they have what they would call bookend tackles, he's still a generational guard. I, so if that's what they yeah, want to do and that. say – because I, I, I think that Paris Johnson is good. He obviously has not been as good as um, the right tackle the Bears drafted, Darnell Wright, to my understanding. But oh, if you, he's not. Let, let, let's say that he's a pro bowler and Joe Alt is a perennial all pro. If that's what you're saying it. that you're going to have in front of Kyler, uh, Kyler, uh, Murray. Kyler Murray, I almost said Williams, um, that but would let, be let's ask a the, good base. Let's ask the million-dollar question, who is he throwing to? That's the biggest issue here. I, I like yeah. I can it, it's I, too it's too attractive to pass on, on Marvin team. Harrison. Yeah, it's when he's staring you at the face in the face as a, the generational wide receiver prospect that he is and that he's been talked about. I don't think you miss that, dude. I really don't. Th it's this is what GMs have to get paid to do, though. Sorry to cut you off. Right. It's, it's no, just no, no, that they, right. they have they have to take that fourth overall pick, still get an equal value at six, seven, whatever it would be at Joe Alt, and then this wide receiver class is deep. So well, if they're going back with the Vikings to yeah. 11 and they draft um, 
Odo, uh, no, Odooney, Odunzi, or Neighbors. Obviously, they could be gone, and they could end up getting um, Brian Thomas, the LSU teammate from Malik. Brian Davis. Thomas, yep, yep. Then yep. you still have a collection of assets afterwards, which you could get uh, in the late of the first Ooh. round in a Donnie Mitchell or something else. So I, they I have a it. lot of potential. I could see it, but then you have to have one of those wide receivers being in the ball. Not Okay, not in the ballpark, but not close either, but... Like somewhere in the same stratosphere as where you where you see other, these other wide receivers, because obviously these top three wide receivers are far and ahead away. There's a gap between these top three and everybody else. Can we agree on that? Yeah, yeah, and I think I think I, I'll always stand by. Mar it's Marvin. If you want to do tears, Marvin Harrison Jr. is S plus, the yes. best wide receiver prospect I have seen. I've even college football player that I've seen since probably Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Then I think that Malik Neighbors is an A plus, so yeah. a whole tier behind is yeah. Malik Neighbors potentially a top ten NFL wide receiver? Hell yeah! There's, and then after season, that, yes. And then after that, Odunzi. I know I'm saying his name wrong. I apologize, guys. It's an A minus. Still a very good player. Probably that Keenan Allen range. He's still an A minus great player. I I see them actually in the same tier. I mean that this is just my opinion, but from what yeah, I've watched, you just I didn't get to see Neighbors work out. Just watch the LSU Pro Day, <laughs> yeah. and then we'll do a video after that. He'll yeah, put his, I guess we he'll could. put he'll take his shirt off and do the baby oil and run his four three. You, you'll see. It, it, there's yeah, a diff I mean, there's a difference there. I promise you. Yeah. Um. But then I, af I, after that, the Brian Thomas, the Donnie Mitchell, those guys are going to be B tier. So yeah, there, there is a gap. He's going to go in the first round at some point. Someone's going to take him just yeah. because of his speed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Donnie Mitchell is going to go in the first round. Brian Thomas is going to go in the first round. Brian uh, Thomas is a top Chaz pick. Walker from North Carolina is also going to probably go in the late first, early second Keon round. Keon Coleman, this, the this wide class, receiver from Florida yeah, State, Coleman, a very good this, for top of the second round. Yeah, this, this is a very, very thorough wide receiver So that, that That's why you can't just assume it. I think we can assume that Arizona will end up with either Marvin Harrison I, Jr. or Joe Alt. It will be yeah. one of those two players. Yeah. Could be at four, could be at six, seven. But that it all boils down to what's for the Bears. The Bears My, can't waste that pick on the ninth best player at nine. No, it has to be. It has to be like a top five player to to make that pick worth it and not trade back and gain capital from and, a QB. And the Vikings team. trying to keep arms race up with the Bears as far as a quarterback. It has us foaming at the mouth a little bit because that's exactly what we want to see. We want to push the good right, players yeah. down the board. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this draft has a bunch of ways of going. I mean, obviously, it's way too early to tell where's, who's going where. It's all smoke screen at this point. But I, I believe the first top three picks are locked in. I have heard talks. Not about the, the players, but the position. I agree. Yes, yes. I, I have heard, and I don't know if this is true. This is just what I've been hearing, that the Vikings have been calling the Patriots about the number three pick. Yeah, I, I have yeah. been hearing that. I'm sure they're calling everybody now that they just got the pick 23 from the Texans for some uh, future draft capital. I'm 100% certain they're, they're calling everybody within the top five or six. They had to have been. You're not doing your job correct if you're Quessy, um, if you're not doing that. So it's possible Patriots trade out and go back to, what is it, pick 11 the Vikings are at. It's possible the Chargers trade out. I don't see the Chargers trading out. They're going to sit there and probably take Brock Bowers or the next available best wide receiver. Um, I, think that they, I, I think that the Chargers will take a wide receiver now. Yeah, they because have to. Quentin, have John to. Just, Quentin yeah. Johnston is an unproven terrible, third. Terrible, terrible. He, he right could now. be. He could become an unreliable two, but you still don't have a number one wide receiver anymore. No, no, you don't. So, so, um, who's who's picking at six? I can't even think of it right now. So the draft um, order after the top three is Arizona at four, and then fifth is the Titans. No, fifth or is, fifth the, is Chargers. The, the Chargers. So the Giants six. are six. Titans, Giants. Ti Giants Titan, Titans are seven. I, I Falcons think, are eight. Yeah, I think Giants go wide receiver or possibly J.J. McCarthy. It's possible if he falls, they take him. But you're sitting with Daniel Jones' terrible contract. You can't move on till and from after the 2025 offseason. You could have him sit for a year under Daniel Jones, but what is he going to learn? Nothing. I, th I think that the Giants trade out of that pick, and I think that the Giants end up with one of those really bad quarterbacks, the Bo Nix or Bo Nicks, Michael Penix. Yeah, it's possible or or yeah. a tackle. They could take a tackle if they trade out with the Vikings and take Talies or Ulu. It's possible. Seven, you have the Titans who. What, what position is that again? Or, Sorry, I have really bad memory. Th that that's six for the Giants. Six for the Giants. Seven is the Titans. They just let go of their tackle. I, they just I wonder. I Ridley. wonder if uh, the Vikings make the trade up to six. Maybe they it's hold possible. on to draft day. 
Possible. Yeah, yeah it's very possible. Yeah. Um, Titans are at seven. They're taking a tackle most likely. They're taking the next of uh, next yeah, best Joe, available Joe, tackle. Joe Walt will not get past seven. No, I don't think so. After that, you have the Falcons. Falcons just loaded up that wide receiver with Darnell Mooney. They're, they're the um, team where it would make sense to waste the eighth overall pick on the eighth best player well, in like a you, Dallas I mean, you Turner have to. because you they have just to. they just gave up everything for Kirk. So yeah, you you have that, to. You're, you're just giving them a lot of money. You need to get a bunch I'm, of rookies. I'm who very are, happy they're ahead of us, and I feel like they will take a defensive player. Yeah, oh, I yeah, 100, do, uh, 110%. I mean, they have to. You just you just loaded your wide receiver room. They just grabbed Darnell Mooney. They just traded player for player for Desmond Ritter for, uh, what is it, Rondale Moore, Elijah Moore, one yeah, of the two. They're loading up with their speed to surround right, Drake right. London. So, yeah, so, I mean, you, you have your wide receiver room set. You, you draft somebody, he's, you know, he's going to sit for a little bit. You don't want to do that to a wide receiver. You need to let them play right away. So it's easily they take the best available defensive player. I think that that's, that's what I see happening. And then obviously whoever falls to us at nine, if a Dunze neighbors falls to us at nine, you take the pick. You don't, you don't play stupid with the pick. You don't try to get sexy and trade back and try to grab somebody. You take the best player available, which is either a Dunze or neighbors and you move on with your life. Truthfully, that's what I think. So that's what I would do all, if I was Ryan all Pulse, this but conversation, all this conversation spurring from a measly fourth round pick that the bears got in exchange with trading for the Eagles. So yeah. well, no the the Chargers took the Bears fourth round pick, not the not not the Eagles fourth round pick because the Eagles fourth that's round right. pick is one twenty two. Right. Ours it's is still it's still within the realm, and when you look at the graphics, everyone's gonna lump that in. But you are right. Yeah, um, yeah. But at the end of the day, how does this impact the Bears? And that's kind of what we're going for. I I do expect whoever the quarterback is, I would be absolutely shit faced if it's not Caleb Williams. I still that's expect. Keenan Allen dude. to top a thousand yards, even if he only plays thirteen games, he's gonna oh, yeah. get his catches. Oh, there's, yeah. gonna, there's gonna be a game where he doesn't get a hundred yards, and for any one of those games, he could very well get two hundred. Um yeah. th- thankfully the I'm gonna jinx this and I apologize, but the um the Carlton Davis trade by the Lions is just not good enough. That's not gonna slow anyone that- down. No, it's not, I but think, it, was a, it was a good pickup for a third rounder. I think it's going to be some weird shiftiness in the draft for the Lions, and ultimately they'll end up with Legereus Sneed. I don't know how, but I think it will happen. Colts have been on the phones calling for Legereus Sneed, so it's please, possible. Please don't put him in the NFC North, so that's okay with me. Um, yeah, I agree. So, guys, I think we're going to call the episode there. I just want to say very quickly, I apologize if you hadn't tell. I'm a little bit – right. I was very sick. I'm still a little bit sick now. It's more of my sinuses are draining, so I apologize. Nick has a little miracle on the way as well, so we apologize yeah, for the billion videos. Um, but we definitely are looking forward to getting back into the swing of things. We yep, kind of are – I, I personally am waiting for something to happen with Fields before we end up making kind of like a free agency uh, overview to see kind of the moves that have happened and then really see what's going to happen. Ultimately, right. we also we obviously talk about a lot of the draft. We both like the draft. We will end up doing a live mock draft like we did last year. Feel free to yep. check that out. Put it on during work. Put it on two times speed to see what we figured out. I hit the nail on the head with Devon Weatherspoon. I'll take that to the grave with me, so that was cool. Um, but if you guys enjoyed the video, obviously, leave a like. Leave a comment down below. Remember, guys, Please. knowledge Please. over narratives. I apologize. I had to drop that bit in. I can't stand that guy. If you if you know, you know. Feel free to leave a comment. Um, Nick, any closing thoughts here to end the episode? So far, Poles has outdone himself this free agency. I think that a lot of people are really not giving him the credit he deserves. He's, uh, he, are... He'd be really good at poker, right? He's really yeah. good at not letting you know yeah. what happens. No one is leaking anything. No one linked. Oh, no one had any idea that Keenan Allen would happen. No one had no any idea. idea that Swift would happen. No idea whatsoever, which is very good for the Bears, in my opinion. Um, he obviously is famous right now for his words of saying, we want to do right by fields. Well, right. what does that look like? Because every quarterback on this earth has a new home already. Um, I guess let's let's hey, end it. Let's you know, end it on a top. Pick. Yeah, let's just end it on like a weird top five list if we can even list five teams. So it's not that Philadelphia team anymore or uh, Pennsylvania team anymore, but it's the other Steelers. It's still mm-hmm. the prime candidate for Fields. I, in my head, have to come up with a scenario. I'll still say um, the Raiders. As a second team, potentially for Fields, you want to yep. give me the last three as a destination for Fields here. Rams. Yes, that's a great one. I don't care I, that they just signed uh, Garoppolo. I mean, don't care. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Rams, obviously Steelers, but um, 
because Russell Wilson is the only QB on the roster as You're, of right now. You had two left. Now you only have one left, the Broncos. I think Sean Payton would love to turn fields could see into that. a potential Taysom Hill. Yeah, I could see that 100%. 110%. 110%. Could see it. And I could see him eat two drafting Bo Nix, Michael Penix at their pick and letting him kind of cook Stick underneath. Stick to the topic. Fields. Where is Fields going to go? Last spot, potential. Last, absolutely last spot if I had to put it out there. I think the Patriots. I think the Patriots. Over Minnesota? Yeah. I Poles is not dealing within the NFC North with Fields. Although it would be doing right by him by giving him Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. And it's Justin not, Jefferson not, is obviously not happening. No. You I mean you're asking for you're asking for you're like Questy picks up the phone and says, The thing that I dislike about the take? Patriots is Brissett. They got their backup, their mentor. But he's a, he's a great bridge quarterback. Yeah, he's a great bridge quarterback. But it's possible that they trade out of three, get grab the best available wide receiver, and, and send a second or a third for, for Fields. It's possible. I wonder if he just thought to himself that he could just hold on to Fields, stash him, and just trade him at the he deadline. He probably can, though. I mean, I think a lot of people are overthinking Not, this. You, uh, you sit. I don't. But think, but think about it. Think about it. You sit and wait until draft, right? It sucks. Sucks for Fields knowing that he has to wait this long and, and get this far with not knowing and not having any certainty about what's going on. You get to draft night. You take Caleb Williams at one. Okay, cool. Next six, seven, eight picks go. Teams start calling. Quarterbacks are going. Someone's in the teens, 15, 16, 17. I don't know who's picking there. I'm just throwing out hypotheticals, but all of them are going. They don't, they don't highly regard Bo Nix, Michael Penix, or who else is coming out? I, I can't even think of anybody else. I mean, those are really the only people that have been talked about. Um, you call. I think they call F- polls. Spencer and Rattler. He's he's going in the second or a third round. He's. I, I hate how everyone's dunking on him, and I understand why because he he lost his job to Caleb Williams. I know, but he, there's something about him. He had a really good senior senior bowl. I, did, I like I like the player as a, a really good pro day. He re, he reminds me of Bajan. Sorry, I'm I'm kind of. Randall. That's okay, but he reminds me of Desmond Ritter, if I'm being honest. But um, where did Ritter yeah. just go? Seattle? God, if where? What? No, no, no. Sam Howell went to Seattle. Ritter just went to the Cardinals. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Cardinals. Yeah, yeah, Cardinals. They they just swapped a player for the wide receiver. Yeah, Ron, Rondale Moore. Um, yeah, I, I think I think Poles is playing this the right way. I think that because I, I did <laughs> see that after Pickett was traded to the Eagles today for I believe a third and a a fourth or a, a third and a sixth or something like that. Um, the Eagles were in talks with Fields, uh, with Poles about Fields. Fields' price was just too high for them. I'm assuming Poles wanted their second, which they weren't willing to uh, part with. They were willing to part for a third for Kenny Pickett. I think that he comes down off the second for a third on draft day, and somebody comes and snags Fields to be their bridge quarterback and let him uh, start for a year and get some feel, uh, some tape on the field. Yeah, I, think, I, think I, w- I would possible. only consider this Fields saga to be a shitstorm, and if you can leave the shitstorm with a third, take it and run, man. It is yeah, what I it agree. is. It is what it is. I 100% agree. I 100% agree. All righty, guys. Like I said, if you enjoyed the episode, leave a comment. Leave a like. Greatly appreciated. Look forward to an episode from us again on Thursday. And then moving forward, we'll, of course, have a lot more Bears content. Thank you guys so much. Peace out. Thank you, guys. Bear down.